Indeed, I wonder what the disciples must have thought in that moment. I wonder what Jesus would do next. And of course, spoiler alert, we know what happens uh, next. Um, and we'll be reflecting on that uh, a lot this week. We saw from the road sign earlier uh, that pictures can have meanings that go beyond what you see. They can be signs that tell you something. And there was a great uh, tradition amongst the prophets of Israel to use actions um, as visual messages. So um, when the words didn't work, they would put their message in a picture or an action that no one could fail to see. So, for example, um, in 1 Kings um, 11, 30, 31, we don't have it up, but there's this prophet, um, Abijah, who wanted to explain to Jeroboam that God was going to give Jeroboam 10 of the 12 tribes of Israel. So he wanted to explain to Jeroboam he was going to give him 10 of the 12 tribes of Israel. And how did he do this? Well, he took his new cloak. I don't know how many of us would do that. He took off his new cloak and he tore it into 12 pieces. Um, And then he gave Jeroboam 10 of those pieces. It was a visual picture of what God was going to do. And so when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, um, and I wonder if you can get that picture up again, he used uh, the same principle. You see, his entry on a cult was a picture that all of Jerusalem would have seen deep meaning in. Firstly, Jesus' action was a clear claim to be king. Um, We heard in the drama and we read it in the passage that over 500 years earlier, the prophet Zechariah had prophesied that Israel would overcome her enemies. And in the middle of that prophecy came um, the verse that we've heard, See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, not just a donkey, on a colt, um, the foal of a donkey, a baby donkey. So not just a donkey, but a baby donkey. And that's from Zechariah 9.9. 9. Jesus' followers had spent three years hearing him teach. They'd seen him perform miracles. And they've heard him many times to keep quiet about the fact that he was the Messiah, the chosen one. Um, but here, on, this, uh, on his final ride... We see Jesus going public about who he is, fulfilling this prophecy from Zechariah 9, 9, 500 years ago. So no wonder the disciples would finally, um, well, not finally, but they would have celebrated. No wonder there would have been these loud shouts and cries of victory and salvation. No wonder they celebrated for the crowds um, who were not yet um, followers of Jesus, they would have been under the Roman rule. And here now was a king finally to come to liberate them. They'd been longing for freedom for so long. So there was this huge uh, sense of jubilation and celebration um, happening in Jerusalem. He was acting out this prophecy that said, I am the king who will bring victory. Jesus rides in and this picture tells those in the crowds, here is your king who is going to bring victory. No wonder they were excited. But secondly, the picture also tells us what sort of king Jesus had come to be. He came on a colt and that would have been a symbol. It was an animal of peace, the donkey. Um, So he didn't come on a war horse, um, the animal of a conquering king. Um, And unfortunately, that's maybe what some of the crowds had expected. And maybe they paid little attention to the fact that Jesus came in on a donkey. They wanted Jesus to come and overthrow the Romans. And that's maybe part of how we see things by the end of the week turn so dramatically. Um, But what kind of king did Jesus come to be? Um, And for that, I'm going to need... Um, a few volunteers. So I wonder if we've got any volunteers to um, uh, today. Otherwise, uh, yeah, Aaron, you want to come? And and Gabriel, why don't we get Aaron and Gabriel to come? On? Let's give them a hand. It's great. It's always hard to, you never know who's going to come. And uh, let me just bring this, my table of props here. Oh, this is where this other mic was. 
yeah, yeah, okay, my stage hands, brilliant, great. I didn't even prepare this, right. So, um, we said earlier that Jesus uh, rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and showed by his actions that he was coming as a king of peace. Um, and um, this is a very different kind of king. I wonder who will play who. Let's. The crown is only going to fit your head, I think. So you be the you be our king. So most kings have uh, riches and palaces. When we think of kings, sometimes you be my my king on this side. Yeah, um, they have um, palaces. They have a lot of money. It's hundreds of thousands of monopoly money. <laughs> hundreds and thousands. They had a lot of money. Um, and they would um, they would often be robed in <laughs> this is not a bed sheet this is a purple robe um, but they'd often be 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 robed in in purple the, the color of royalty I love it with your money as well um, and 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 this is what a king uh, would often look like they'd be dressed in royal robes and they'd have lots of money. Is this the kind of king that Jesus came to be? No, Jesus was not like that. He was, um, when he was born, he wasn't laid in a beautiful, expensive crib. We know that he was, oh, it's pretty big. We know that he was, um, there was no, uh, it tells us he was um, wrapped in cloths and placed in a manger because there was no guest room available for him. We know that even from the beginning, Jesus came humbly into this world. And as an adult, Jesus said to his disciples, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Jesus didn't sit in a fancy palace. Jesus gave up his riches um, to come to earth. He wouldn't have worn a purple robe, a robe, but ordinary plain linens. So we'll give you this ordinary plain linen which is not a, just a white bed sheet. Yeah. Make sure you can just get your hands out, that's all. Yeah. Right. Great. Now, another thing that we think of kings is um, power <laughs> and servants. So I've just had a look at <laughs> what I have either side of me so I can see what you guys see. You've got to use your imagination a little bit. Most kings have power over others. They tell people what to do. They have servants. So let's get a couple of servants for you. Do you want to pick a couple of, you, do you want to pick some servants? Or do we, okay, we've got a couple of servants here. Okay. It's, a couple of servants will come out. Um, and I want you to kneel before this king, okay? Now, now you, you wish you hadn't, you hadn't volunteered. You kneel before this king, brilliant. Was Jesus like this as a king? No, he wasn't. You see, when a couple of disciples started arguing who was the most important, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came to serve, and one of the things that he did for his disciples, and we'll, I think we'll think about, maybe we'll think about some of that this week, um, would, he would have a bowl. I didn't put water in it, just we've got electrical equipment and whatnot. Um, but he would wash the feet of his disciples. He would humble himself at the feet of his friends. And before they ate at the Passover meal, the final meal together, he would wash their uh, very dirty and very smelly feet. Um, and so that was the kind of king that Jesus had come to be. Another thing maybe when we think about kings is having a crown. You wore this before. You can put this on. I know you like this one. Wear it. And a throne. Could we get a throne? Um, so we're going to give um, Gabby a, 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 a crown and a throne and a servant. Does this feel good? Yeah? Take a seat on your throne. Take a seat on your throne with all your money and your servants and your throne. Wow. What a Sunday. What a Sunday. This is where kings normally rule from their kingdoms, right? On a throne with their crown and their money. And was Jesus like this? He wasn't. Um, the only crown that Jesus wore, and I didn't make one for the sake of safety, um, was a crown of thorns, which would be placed on his head 
by the soldiers before he was crucified. Um, um, and he didn't rule from a, if you could grab that for me, um, the cross. Um, I'm very thankful that the school did a, a, a drama with this cross, which we can borrow. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he carried his cross, of course. Um, but Jesus didn't rule from a throne, but he was enthroned on a cross. Um, and that's when God, um, well, that's where Jesus was um, crucified, um, but in doing so was also lifted up by our God. Crown of thorns and a cross. So Jesus is a very different king, isn't he? He didn't have a palace and riches. He didn't expect people to serve him, but he served them. He didn't wear a crown um, or rule his kingdom from a throne, um, but he wore a crown of thorns as he gave up his life on the cross. You see, Jesus didn't come as a warrior king to set people free from the oppressive Romans. He came as the king of peace to set people free from their chains of sin and to bring them peace with God the Father, which he did when he willingly laid down his life on the cross. And then, of course, we'll think about this week that he rose three days later. He didn't come as an aggressive and dominating king to rule over a country by force, but he came as the king of love to rule over people's hearts. The crowds in Jerusalem misunderstood what kind of king Jesus was and what he had come to do for them. And that's just why a few days later they were calling for his crucifixion. Is it hard just being on your knees as a servant? <laughs> do we understand what kind of king Jesus is and what he has done for us? You see, Jesus didn't come simply for the Jews then. He came for everyone, right? We know that for God so loved the world, uh, the world, he loved everyone. What a wonderful king. When he died on the cross, Jesus made it possible for each one of us to be set free from our chains of sin and to know peace with God the Father. What a wonderful king. Well done, volunteers. You've, you guys have done fantastic. You guys have done fantastic. You can keep the money for now, but I'll need it back at the end. Otherwise, we'll be short a few thousand pounds at Christmas. Um, thank you. Maybe just lay that against there. Just be, yeah, thank you. Now, I just give us an uh, opportunity um, to respond. And we can respond thinking about actually some of what happened with the crowd um, we're just going to spend, uh, well, just for a couple of um, minutes, I just want you to take a few moments um, because as Jesus came in, there was this sense of praise. There was this sense of um, victory. Um, and of course, in our lives, and it may just be victory over um, sin and our own salvation, but I imagine amongst this room, there are many stories of um, victories and things um, that just God has done amazing things in your life, that he set you free um, from um, maybe addictions, maybe he set you free from thoughts, um, maybe you've been um, set free in um, parts of your character. Um, there's things that Jesus gives us victory over. Maybe you've got testimonies of great things that God has done where opportunities um, came about when you thought there was no way that somehow God came through for you. And the thing is, we, um, as we think about Hosanna and the sense of um, worship and victory to um, this uh, king that enters in, um, God is is desperate to be involved and entering into different moments in our days um, and different moments in our lives and, and to come in. And as we prayed at the start, come Lord Jesus, have your way amongst us. Um, and so um, just where we are, I want us to think about what it might look like for us 
in praise and worship in our lives to God. It might just be a simple prayer of thanksgiving. It might be on a Sunday morning that when we come, we celebrate with this sense of victory and, ju- uh, and jubilee. It's, it's a, um, a great celebration when we gather together, um, God's people under one roof, to celebrate and worship God. Um, that there's a different sense of um, praise that comes up out of us um, when we think about um, what Jesus has done for us. So let's just take... Um, a moment Um, just um, well actually I I thought we would maybe do this quietly I just feel maybe we should just do this loudly (laughs) actually so don't we just stand and um, yeah I was just thinking how we sometimes do this um, uh, I don't know this is thought has just come to me as well is that sometimes in football stadiums Um, they have a a minute's silence to remember someone. But actually, they've got into the habit um, more so to actually have a minute of celebration and um, clap and applause. And um, yeah, just where you are, just think about maybe, maybe there's something specific. Maybe it may just be, thank you, God, for saving me, for for dying for me. Um, And, um, and we're just going to clap, I think, and just maybe make a noise. I think that's probably what happened when Jesus came into Jerusalem. Um, now, for them, it was a different sense of victory that they misunderstood. But actually, Jesus did ultimately win. There was victory in his sacrifice on the cross and him raising from the dead three days later. So let's just lift up um, a clap and um, a, a cheer and a shout just for like, let's go for like... Uh, I'll go, let's go 20 seconds. Yeah? Yeah? All right, we're going to go on a count of three. One, two, three. Okay, you can take your seat. Oh, praise God. Thank you so much for, um, I say humoring me. That's probably the wrong, wrong expression for, for words. But yeah, I had here for us to have reflection. <laughs> but actually, sometimes our reflection can be like that, right? Because actually, I, uh, that actually co- that speaks to me a little bit. Actually, our, our life should be a reflection of, of what God has done for us, right? And I think there is joy um, in that. Of course, um, the walk as a Christian is not always easy, but there is a sense of praise. And I think on Palm Sunday, we're reminded um, of the cries of, of victory. And we have actually the victory, not the ones maybe that um, the people of the time expected. But of course, we are um, ahead of what Jesus went on to do. And so we know the ultimate victory that was won. Hallelujah. Praise God. And may our lives sing Um, in word and in deed, in all that we do of what God has done for us. Um, And let's not just contain it to, um, you know, um, songs on a Sunday morning, but may our lives be an expression of our thanksgiving and our praise um, and worship to God. Now, not only did the crowds praise Jesus when he entered Jerusalem um, by waving palms and singing songs of praise, but um, we read also that they also laid down um, their cloaks um, on the uh, dusty street in front of Jesus' donkey. And this was a way of honoring um, Jesus as a king. Um, and so there's this question. So how do we honor Jesus as king today? Um, and one of the most important ways we honor Jesus is by listening to what he says and then obeying him. And um, kings are to be obeyed. They don't uh, obey us. We obey them. So um, I think as an encouragement for us this morning is not only to praise Jesus as king in our lives, but also what it might look like for us to obey him. When Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself, Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine, are we willing to obey him? 
um, when Jesus um, says, do not judge and you will not be judged, thinking about our hypocrisy and um, how we have a, a, a judgmental attitude towards others, are we willing to obey him? And this can be a hard one when Jesus says, forgive and you will be forgiven. Are we willing to obey him? When Jesus says, give, and it will be given to you, are we willing to obey him? So what might it look like? What might King Jesus be speaking in your life today about what it means to obey him? Um, so this kind of second part of response is um, about surrender um, and is to give us an opportunity to surrender our lives um, to Jesus to lay down our cloaks on the road in front of Jesus, to honor him with our lives. Um, so I'm just going to pray. And um, this morning, however you want to respond, um, you, um, well, just pray as I pray. Um, you, um, yeah, you might just want to take a posture in your heart of um, kneeling, you Feel free to kneel where you are as well. Um, but yeah, let's just honor God um, as we surrender our lives to him. Lord, we want to see people through your eyes and see situations as you see them. Lord, we give you our eyes. Lord, we want to hear your voice speaking to us. And hear the needs of people around us. Lord, we give you our ears. Lord, we want to speak your words. Words that are truthful and kind and which build others up. Lord, we give you our mouths. Lord, we want to use our hands and our feet to serve you. Going to places you call us to and doing the things you want us to do. Lord, we give you our hands and our feet. And Lord, we want to love you with our whole hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, we give you our hearts. Lord, we want to obey you, so we offer you all that we are and all that we have. Not our will, but your will be done in our lives. And Lord, we give you our lives. Amen.